Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Barrett and welcome to my kitchen. You know, for many years my husband John and I ran a cowboy cafe in a little town in Montana. Our customers were the cowboys and workers from all over the county. These were good people who wanted good food and lots of it. So each day we would create a daily special and in those fun days one of the most popular dishes we made was that classic dish of beef and homemade noodles. We used an old noodle recipe we learned from John's mom and put it together with a big portion of beef tips. We sold out of this dish every time we made it. Everyone loved it, including our six sons. And the son that loved it most of all was my youngest son, Joe. And now here it is, 50 years later, and Joe is still making beef and homemade noodles. So we are going to share that recipe with you today. As you know, I like to cook with family. So at this time, I'm going to introduce my youngest son, Joe. Hi, Mom. Hi, Joe. I'm happy to be here and have a chance to cook with you, and I'm very happy that we're making beef and noodles. That was my all-time number one daily special at the old cafe. Uh -huh. uh, to start, why don't you teach us the ingredients? Well, I'm going to teach them to you the same way my mother-in-law taught me. Making noodles is as easy as one, two, three. One teaspoon of salt, two cups of flour, and three eggs. And that's as easy as one, two, three, as my mother-in-law told me. And that's how you taught me. Right. That's exactly right. So what we're going to do now is take those three simple ingredients and turn them into homemade noodles. So why don't we get started? Okay. When my dad made these noodles, he would just lay out the flour on a cutting board, he'd make a well in the center, he'd add the salt, crack the eggs into the center, he'd mix it together with a fork, and then he'd get his hands in there and just knead the dough for about 20 minutes until it was ready to cut. Well, fortunately, times have changed and we have a food processor, people also have mixers, and it makes it so much easier. And that's the way we want to do it. We want to make it easy so that people will enjoy making it and they can enjoy eating it. So the next thing we're going to do is use the food processor here and we're going to assemble the ingredients. So the first thing we do is add two cups of flour and we add the salt. We give it just a quick couple of spins just to mix the ingredients together and get a little air in that flour. Now we simply crack in the three eggs And the next step is combining these. We do that by starting it with a little pulse till they get mixed together and the flour doesn't just fly around. But once it's mixed, then we can just turn it on and you let it go for just about two minutes. And as it's going, you're gonna see what happens. When it's done right, it's gonna turn into a ball and it'll start spinning around the edge of the bowl. So let's see how this works. Now you can see it's kind of in a ball form now, uh, little balls, but what we want is for it to turn into one large ball that starts to spin around the bowl. Now what we have here are little crumbly balls, so it's not quite where we want it to be. What this needs is just a little more water. And the trick that you need to do when you're making noodles is to just look at the dough. You can't always say for certain that three eggs is going to be enough moisture. It's going to depend on how large the eggs are, how exactly well you measure the flour, how humid it is out. So one of the tricks when you're making noodles is to always have a little bit of water close by and maybe you'll need to add a half a teaspoon, just enough to make it turn into that ball that I'm talking about. So um, I think we need to add some water to this. Yes. So, uh, 
What's the old trick you told me that dads used to do with the water? He'd take a half of an eggshell and fill it with water and carry it back to his workplace. And that's true. I remember dad doing that. And that way you'd have just an eggshell sitting there. It's a nice old fashioned way of cooking. You don't have to even use a teaspoon. You have the water right here to use if you need to. So let's fill this up. Now, we're going to add a little bit of water. We're going to start the food processor and you're going to see the dough turn into the ball. So there it is. It's starting to go. There we go. So that's what you want. The dough is clumped together and it's starting to go around as a ball. So the next step now is to take it out of the food processor and knead it more on the counter. Because even though the food processor has done most of the work, there still is a need for a little bit of the old fashioned kneading. So let's get this out. And we get this ready. And basically all it takes is about two minutes of kneading. And of course you have to have flour on your board so that you don't have to worry about your hand sticking. And this final two minutes of hand kneading just does the last bit of incorporating of all the ingredients and uh, helps you make the smooth texture that's going to allow it to dry easier and cut easier because you want the dough to be kind of smooth and pliable and the Cuisinart gets you again 95% of the way there but you do have to finish it off a little bit by hand. And that's so I've been kneading this for about two minutes and I can really feel that it's very smooth now kind of soft, it's not really hard to work with, and that's what we want, so it'll make it easier later to roll out and cut. Uh, so mom, beef and noodles was one of the daily specials. Do you remember how much you charged? Every daily special was 95 cents. <laughs> and so what did that come with? Everything. What's everything? Came with soup, and salad, and dinner plate, and vegetables, and <laughs> bread and butter, and dessert and all the coffee that you want. <laughs> well, that sounds amazing. I don't know how you stayed in business. That sounds great. Um, well, now we have this dough all, all soft and easy and to work with. And the next step is to put this aside to rest for a half an hour to two hours. And what you need to do is take a piece of plastic wrap, you wrap it up, and all you do is just set it on the side of the counter and walk away. The purpose here is to let it rest and relax, but you don't want it to lose any of the moisture. So the plastic wrap keeps all the moisture in. So we'll be back in a half an hour and we'll take it from there. Our dough is rested for a half an hour. So now it's time to do the rolling and the cutting and turn these into noodles. So you've had it rested in the plastic so it doesn't lose moisture. Now we take the dough ball and cut it into four pieces. And the reason we do that is because smaller pieces are easier to work with. Now we take the ones we haven't used and put them back in the plastic so they don't dry out. And you take your one quarter, you scatter some flour on your countertop. If you have one like this, mine is quartzite, I can uh, do my rolling and cutting right on it. If you don't have one like this, then you uh, can use a cutting board. So you flour and turn, get it covered with flour, flour your rolling pin a little bit, and then the next step is to simply roll it out as thin as you possibly can and as much of a disc as you possibly can. And the reason I say as much as you possibly can is that no matter how thin you hand roll this dough, it's still going to be end up thicker than store-bought pasta. So you don't have to worry about rolling it out too thin. It's basically impossible to do. Some people have pasta machines like the one you see next to me. And if you do have one like that, you can use it. And I do use it sometimes depending on the dish. But the truth is, for a dish like beef and noodles, I much prefer a rustic, thicker noodle with more substance. So I really like rolling them out by hand and I especially like the fact that that's the way I remember them from when I was a child. Once you have it rolled out, we move on to the cutting. And what I like to do is turn this into four sheets because it makes it easier to cut. So you cut it in half, you make sure this is floured so they don't stick together, you fold it over. You cut it in half again and fold it over. And there you have four sheets of pasta. 
And this is where we cut these and turn them into noodles. You curl your fingers back so you don't cut yourself. And I like to cut them about a quarter inch wide. And that ends up being a good size to hold up to the beef. It's coming later. Once they're cut, you kind of separate them with your fingers. The fact that they have a lot of flour on them will help that. And then you put them aside onto a plate and move on until you've completed all four quarters. So we finished slicing our noodles and we put them on the plate. So the next step is to drop them into boiling water and cook them. I did want to mention these noodles were really easy to work with. The dough was very smooth and the reason is we used all-purpose flour. Now there is cake flour in the supermarket and there's bread flour. But the nice thing about these noodles is they work best with regular all-purpose flour. If you use those other flours, the dough ends up very stiff and it's much harder to roll out. So the nice thing is use all-purpose flour. So the next step here is to add them to our boiling water. It's always good to drop just a couple in at first because the water will surge and you don't want it to overboil. So by just giving them a little bit to start, it gives it an ability to calm down and then you can add the rest. What you're doing is with the flour in the noodles, the starch in the noodles is breaking the surface tension of the water which causes the bubbles to be larger. That's the reason why noodle water boils over so easily. But we'll watch this and make sure it doesn't boil over and it takes about 15 minutes to cook. Now once they're in, we want to just give them a stir so they don't stick together. Now you'll notice I did not add any salt to this water. The noodles are salted and the uh, adding salt to the water would just make the dish too salty. Um, so this is just water. I didn't add oil either. Some people do, thinking that it would make the noodles uh, not stick together, but I found that's not a problem with these noodles. They have enough flour on them. So we get them going, we get the water up to a boil, and then just let it go for about 15 minutes, and then we'll drain them. So we're ready to eat. The house is filled with a great aroma of these beef tips that have mm. been cooking for three hours, and these homemade noodles. And all we have to do now is decide how we want to eat them. So uh, how do you want yours? You can have them with just butter, or you can have them with the beef tips. What do you think? I think I'll have the beef tips Okay. the homemade noodles. Well, good, since we put a lot of work into it. So let's do that. So first, you uh, plate a portion of noodles. There we go. We'll give ourselves a small portion so we can try some later with just butter. Then we um, add some of the uh, beef tips. And uh, that looks like a nice, uh, a nice plate. How does it smell? Mm, it's beautiful. It does smell great. It's great, and now we're ready to eat. So, are you ready for your first bite? And I'm going to try it too. Mmm. Yum. Mm. This is it's fantastic. Delicious. It came out exactly the way I remember it 40 years ago. It's just a great taste. Well, it's so great that you taught us all this love of cooking and this love of food. I just don't know how to thank you. I know the best way to thank me, and that is whenever you boys cook, think of your dad and me. Well, that's a deal. I'll do that. Thank you again. Mm. You know, I had so much fun today. I never get tired of cooking and sharing that cooking with others. So I'll keep doing this as long as I can. Well, now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye from your happy hooker. Oh, I mean cooker. Bye-bye. <laughs>